Do you not know, saith God, that I have given you instructions for this last day? I told you that I am ever with you, that I would neither leave you nor forsake you. But I desire that you would put me first in your life, that you would seek me early so I be found, that you above and beyond anything that you do, that you would begin to exalt me. For I chose to tell you these end time truths. I told you to keep your eyes off of the world system for its failing. I told you to keep your eyes off of other people and their information and their opinions. And thirdly, I told you to keep your eyes off the human flesh because flesh fails us. Flesh makes mistake. And I told you to set your eyes on me. Now let me fill you with light and let me lift you higher. For my words to you this day are to look up, draw close, and let me take you into balance, into a deeper walk, saith God. Friday. Friday. This is our 20th year anniversary. Amen. We want to celebrate with you. That's 20 years now. Amen. Bless you. Let's get in the word together. Amen. How many here ready to... Have I missed anything? All right, so we've been doing a series called Reigning in Life in Christ, and this one is called Wisdom from Above. Wisdom from Above. Amen. So as we begin to study this, let me just tell you something. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You've got to understand how those work. How many here know what knowledge is? Knowledge is the accumulation of facts, figures, things, information. Can you say amen? We go to school to gain knowledge, hopefully. Amen. We're learning about things. We, we study the Bible to gain knowledge, right? And grace and peace are multiplied in 2 Peter chapter 1 through the knowledge of him. All right? And then there's wisdom. Everyone say wisdom. Now, here's the definition, that the best one I can find. There's probably better ones. But wisdom is the ability to take that information, that knowledge, and to put it to practice to get the desired results. For example, let me kind of share this. Many people go to school all their life, but they don't have the wisdom to get a job. Come on. You see, we can have knowledge and knowledge about God and God and God, but are we lacking the wisdom about how to put one foot in front of the other and become a doer of the word? You see... And so we need to have wisdom, the ability to put to practice what we know to be the truth, to get the desired results. Say amen. Now, <coughs> sorry about that. Wisdom and knowledge work hand in hand. How many know you can't put something together or act on wisdom if you don't have any knowledge? Hello. So let me describe a brand new Christian. When I was brand new, I was saved. I was filled with the Spirit. I loved God, but I had no knowledge. And so I lacked a lot of wisdom. I had a lot of knowledge, but lacked wisdom. There, there's transitions in our life 
where we get lots of knowledge, but the ability to put that knowledge to operation by the Spirit of God, that's the wisdom of God. Can you say amen? Now, there's two kinds of wisdom. Say two kinds. There's earthly wisdom, and they are devilish, and there is God's wisdom. Your job is to discern which one you're going to operate in. That's why Pastor Kerry has always encouraged you to meet with God first so he runs your life and you make the right choices. Say amen. So there's wisdom from heaven and there's wisdom of the earth which is sensual and devilish. Let me read my paragraph to you. So good morning to you. God wants us and he's given us lots of fresh insights and words for us to live this year. And if we do them, we're going to be blessed Folks, God wants us to not neglect our salvation, which was first spoken to us through the prophets and then through his son. But how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation, right? So what happens to a lot of Christians is little by little, our eyes slip off of the Lord and slip down on everything else. What was the first word God gave us? Look up. What happens to Christians and, and, and bless our heart, we see things, our eyes are fixed on what's not right and everything. Next time, our expectations, our excitement for God begin to slip down, okay, and on to physical things. When we do, remember, we're like a camera, and we begin to absorb what we begin to focus on. One of the other words God gave to us was, slow down and focus. So every one of these words God gives us are not just for you to just shuffle around. These are specific words for this church to do its job for its community. Can you say amen? You ask many churches and they don't have their vision written out. We have our vision written out. We know where we're going. We know where we're going to be there. And we know who's going to get us there. Say amen. Also, the wisdom of God is doing the word and walking in God's love. Would you agree? This is where God's wisdom and common sense comes into play. God sent the Holy Spirit into this earth so we, his children, could be taught the wisdom of God. He said, when my spirit comes, he will guide us into all truth. This is in John 16. And he will not reveal things of himself, but he will reveal all that I've said unto you. And he uses it a special word. He shall declare them unto you. That word declare means to reveal with emphasis. Everyone say reveal with emphasis. So a lot of things are being revealed to us, but very few things are being revealed to us by God and with emphasis. So God thinks you're very important. He wants the best for you. He wants me to get, give you things that will help you in your walk. But it isn't any good if we're not doers of it. Can you say amen? Yeah, there's no, there's no room in, in church in 2024 in these last days for a lot of spectators. It's time to get into the game. And really find out what God wants you to do. Get your hands wet. Get in the kitchen and help build the church. Say amen. Do you have friends that are out there and their church is not working? It is not a proselyting to ask somebody to come visit your church if they're not getting anything at their church. Hello. Because there's only how many churches? There you go. So if you see your brothers and sisters floundering, they haven't got this, and say, hey, come, try us out. But if you don't do that, how are we going to grow? Hello? Hello? And don't think, well, what if they tell me no? Then you're not a very good salesman. Let's sell Jesus. Can you say amen? Because the people, are, our friends, are they doing good? Is their life together? Huh? Hello? We want them to be. Come on. Right? And so if it's not, and your life is pretty much together because of the good word you get, because you're reading your Bible and you're doing what's calling, uh, what God has asked us to do, then you're in a healthy pitch, position. Your job is to draw people closer to God, isn't it? Amen. So don't forget to invite people to your church. We're going to cover these four areas. Number one, 
knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. I let you in on a little of that earlier. Two, using the right wisdom. There's two. Three, wisdom in our prayer, prayers, and in our walk. I'll go over them again. Number four, let the Spirit of God give and move us in wisdom. Okay. Number one, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. We're going to give you a definition of them. Two, using the right wisdom. Three, wisdom in our prayer life and in our walk. And fourthly, let the Spirit of God give us wisdom on how we do things or move us in wisdom. All right, point number one. Go with me to Proverbs chapter one. Let's look at, at verse one through seven. Now I'm going to go and grab that. And when I do, I'm going to read our, our scripture. I always forget things like a real professional here. Okay, let's get our scripture up. All right. Boy, I like that backdrop. All right. So let's see what it says. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, cleanse me, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Amen. In Psalms uh, 51.10, create in me a clean heart, O God. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. The word spirit there means attitude there. Renew a steadfast, unmovable attitude drawing to God. Again, church and Christians fail when they let their eyes slip off of the Lord and onto everything else. And that way, we, we become overwhelmed by what we see and hear. No, we're to be run by faith. We're to walk by faith. We're to move not by our eyes, not by our ears, but by the Spirit. Say amen. All right. So, is that the last part of that scripture? All right. So, again, so let's go to point one. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Proverbs chapter 1, 1 through 7. It says, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Now, we know he's king. So what God wants him to do is something very important. But I want to let you know what God wants you to do is something very important for your life and for God's life. He has a special assignment for each one of us. Can you say amen? Do you know what it is? And are you after it? All right. Verse, and why did he give them this wisdom? Verse 2 says, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Three, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. That's balance. Four, to give prudence to the simple. That's common sense. And the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding will, will uh, attain wise counsel. To understand a proverb and an enigma. That's a puzzle. And the words of the wise and the riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools will hate what? Wisdom. Amen. You see, I learned a long time ago when I'm teaching and sharing to get right to the point. If somebody is really wanting to know about God, you can say, you want to know more about God? And they'll say, well, yeah, and then we can take it from there. But oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes, they'll get up and say, no, I don't want to know about God. Don't let people like that pull on your time. God will guide you and show you who's ready and who's not, how to pray and how not, so that you can cover those areas so you have enough time for you and God and enjoy your life. How many know God wants us to enjoy our life? He doesn't want our life full of struggles every day. Gosh, we couldn't handle that. He wants our life full and full of peace and full of good things. That's why he says, come unto me and I shall give you. That's right. But oftentimes we're exposed to things around us. 
So it depends on what we're going to give you today on whether we're going to operate, react, respond, or we're going to be in wisdom, or we're going to operate sensually or by our feelings. And so we're just going to look at this. So let's go look at this again. All right, notice it goes on further, verse 5. A wise man will hear and increase learning. I find that's really hard for some people today. Because if you need to share sometimes with people, they look at you like, don't lecture me. I know. I, I, want, I want to let you know that most, most people don't know what God wants to reveal to us because he wants to take us into a deeper walk with him. And if we think we know it, then you're not going to go into that deeper walk. You say, Lord, take me wherever you want. You know it's going to be good. Because God's God has everything good and perfect. All right, so let's look at a couple of points. Number one, God wants us to know the difference between the world's ways and his ways. Can you say amen? We are to want to know wisdom and want to be instructed in the ways of God. Number three, Jesus said, come unto me and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn what? Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Fourthly, in us, God dwells. We have received him in all his fullness. <coughs> Sorry. But now we are to know wisdom, how to apply it, and receive instruction, and know justice, judgment, and equity. So guess what? We're to know how to apply the word of God, we're to continue to receive instructions from the Word and from the Spirit. We're to know justice, what is right and wrong. We're to know judgment, how to discern what is good for us and what is not. Don't waste your time if it's going to waste your time. Hello? And not only that, but equity. I'm amazed at how many people, the enemy's been able to get people out of balance. They got more going out than they got coming in. They want to help everybody like Jesus, but they don't have any prayer life. They're not in the word. You can't be dumping more out than you got coming in. Hey, if you don't believe me, argue with your car. You're running out of gas. No matter how bad you, you want to get around, you're going to have to go for gas. And so let us be Christians that stay filled up and not always having to go for gas when we're in trouble. Say amen. Let's take care, slow down, and let God even out those rhythms that we have with him. Amen. Fifthly, to give common sense to the young men. There's a lot of lacking of common sense. I don't know about you, but just give you an example. Years ago, I, we don't use a banking system anymore. We use... Cashless, different things, you know. Write me a letter on it, whatever. But we used to go to the bank all the time. It used to scare me when people couldn't count change. I learned to count change when I was 16. You know, give, it's, 90, it's 90 cents, they give you a buck. Give them a dime. So people lose the common. And I tell you what's happening. The, the enemy is getting people away from what's common sense what our parents and grandparents would know commonly what to do, and getting people doing the most stupidest things. How about this woke thing? Woke. It's going to give them a stroke. Ding dong. This new map, all this stuff. Lacking common sense. Hello? And God give us common sense. The idea for God's wisdom, God's instruction, God's word is to give the young man common sense so that we can grow up in him. Can you say amen? Another thing, too, is we need to realize is wise men will still hear the word and increase learning. But people who think they have arrived won't. Have you ever had somebody say, I know, I know. Hey, let me share you what to do. I know. I know, and you know they don't know. What is that? That's somebody who's speaking without wisdom, lacking common sense. Are you with me? 
Let's go to point two. We need to use the right wisdom. Amen? Go with me to Proverbs chapter 14. Look at verse 12. It says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but the ends is the ways of death. Hello? That shows you the world's wisdom. Doing things our way or the world's way does not lead us to God. It leads us to death. So there are a lot of people on the wrong path. What is our job? To help them get them off if we can. Amen. A couple of points I want to give you under that scripture. A way that leads to death because we think we know the way. Jesus is the way only. Point one, church, God desires for us to make the right choices in life. Do you agree? And to walk in his wisdom as we live in this world. We're a testimony. Two, the world through their own foolish wisdom didn't know God. Romans chapter one. And walk on in a way that creates destruction for them. Thirdly, all humans are a target for corruption. But think you're above that. That's silly and it really is a lacking common sense. When a spirit leaves somebody, it thinks it owns you. And it walks by and can't find any rest. So I'm going to come back to so-and-so. And I'm going to bring some buddies and try to make their life worse. So for a Christian, there's no such thing for you to back off of God. Hello? Because the ones that back off of God get a little extra visitors. That's what the scripture says. So what should we do? We should act with common sense. When a spirit leaves us, fill our hearts with something to take its place. Christians can't go around living like they used to. And not expect for the enemy not to harass them. You need to live in the newness of life. Experience all the wonders that God has for you. Amen. I don't want to lose any of that. Amen. So all humans are a target of corruption and slavery to sin or in some form of bondage. The enemy tries to put bondage on every human being. Either bound to this, bound to that. You're bound to that. Some people are bound by fear. Some people are bound by their, their stomach. They're bound by cigarettes. Bound by lots of things. The enemy wants to put guilt and bind us so that we're not free to love God and to be a testimony in this world. Say amen. amen. So let's not be bound. We're set free. Okay, so in, in James chapter... 3 verse 13 through 18 tells us of the two wisdoms and it says who is wise and understanding among you everybody go God let him show by good conduct or mannerism by the way you live that his works are done in meekness of wisdom everyone say meekness you see meekness doesn't mean pushy it means that maybe you are a powerful person, but you don't use all your power at once and you make a mess. You're not a bull in a china shop. You're able to walk amongst with people without insulting them, beating them because you think you're all that hot. Meekness is a horse under, under a training of somebody who trained them being led around by bridles. Couldn't you say amen? Horse is powerful, yet it's been meeked. You're a powerful person. You don't need to be all the way on all the time. You need to know when to back off, when to speak, when to flow, what to say. And God has to teach us that way by allowing us to use his wisdom. Say amen. Good. So he, goes, and he says, who has understanding among you? All right, so, but if you have bitter envying, envy some, oh, I want to be like so-and-so. Why do they always get the blessing? And self-seeking, I want to do it because I'm the best at doing things. You see this self, you want to gratify self. Is this wisdom from above? Come on, don't lose me here. But if you have bitter envying and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. 
where envying and self-seeking exist. Listen, confusion and every evil thing are there. Verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to be or to yield, not to argue, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Don't be one way and then two-faced to the next. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace, sowing and reaping by those who make peace. So you can see the two wisdoms. One is sexual, one's demonic. One is self-centered, creates envy, it creates competition, it creates churches to stay small. And then two, the wisdom from above is first what? Pure. God's wisdom has the pure motives. If you're operating God's wisdom, it's all done on the benefit of love. Not only is it pure, but what? Amen. It's peaceable. It causes peace, reconciliation. It's gentle, not argumentative. It's willing to yield and not argue. See, I don't have to be right. God is right. Every argument comes when an unsurrendered person doesn't want to give up their point of interest. Don't do that. Peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, full of good fruits, and shows no hypocrisy or partiality. Now that describes God's wisdom. Can you say amen? How many here know I love you all the same? Even though you're different personalities and I respond differently to your personalities, God loves you all the same, doesn't he? He's no respecter of persons and neither should we respect gay clothing or people, excuse me, the phrase, the happy, rich people's clothing as versus the people that don't have a whole lot. We're not supposed to be respecter of persons. We're supposed to love everybody the way Jesus would love. Can you say amen? This wisdom comes from above. It's pure. It's peaceable. It's easy to be entreated, approachable, easy to yield, doesn't argue. And that wisdom is God's wisdom flowing through us. Say amen, somebody. All right, let's move on to our next point. God's wisdom in prayer and how we walk. Go with me, Colossians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. God's wisdom in the way we pray and the way we walk. All right, Colossians 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you how much? richly in all wisdom. In other words, don't beat people on the head. Show them the way. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord, Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now, do you see the wisdom in that? That's actually telling us, if we're so caught up in God, we can't get caught up in all the other things that might trick us or cause us to be in bondage. Can you say amen? I love what my wife said to me the other day. I was kind of upset about something, you know. When I do, I'm verbal. We get over it. We pray about it. And you know what she said? Her great word to me was, get over it. What a refreshing word to hear. Because that's it. Sometimes we latch on to things and they begin to control our emotion. Get over it. Let it go and let God, give it to God so he can work that out. Say amen. Because it doesn't do us any good to walk around with a frown or looking like we're upset. How many people are we going to bring to God that way? None. You should be excited why? You're on your way to heaven. Your sins are forgiven. Hello, God's walking in you. You're walking in God. For in him we live, we move, we have our existence. Hello, are you with me? So let's look. So look what it says. Let the word, uh, word of Christ dwell in you richly. All right. So let's go down to Second Chronicles. Now this is the prayer. God came to Solomon again. And we know Solomon to be a man of God's wisdom. But there's something in his prayer I want you to see. There's some wisdom and instruction here. 
Now, how many know his father, David? He was a warrior. He was constantly asking for vengeance on his enemies and this and that and everything. Read the Psalms. But look at 2 Chronicles. That's Old Testament. Verse, uh, let's say, chapter 1, verse 7, then 10 through 12. So let me read it to you. Verse 7. On that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask, what shall I give you? Wow, wouldn't that be good? I think he said that to uh, blind Bartimaeus. What do you want me to give to you? You see, God is so willing to give if our motives are not selfish. So he said that. Look at verse 10. Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this great people of yours? Then God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart, you have not asked for riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked for a uh, long life, but have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge granted are granted to you, and I will give you riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had who were before you, or shall any after you. Now, we know Solomon's a king, but we also know God's no respecter of person. Did you still notice that Solomon didn't say vengeance upon my enemies? Lord, help me to become wealthy and wise. Did you notice there was no self-centered request in his prayers. He just simply said, give me wisdom so I may judge your people in their coming and their going and may be able to mediate your wisdom out to them. Amen. I use my own words, but yes. Right? And what did God do? Because his prayer was not in vengeance, was not self-centered, but it was for God's people. Folks, that's my prayer. My prayer has been that way for years. God, that I will bring something to your people. I will help them. I, I'll grant it. I'm not perfect, a perfect man, but God honors when we request that way. So make sure that you don't ask for vengeance on your enemy. and don't Make sure you don't ask for riches and honor. Just ask for wisdom and instruction. Can you say amen? All the rest will come with it. Hello? If you ask for the wrong things first, you'll get the wrong things. Well, God won't give them to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, not what you're going to put on, not what you're going to eat. Amen. All right, so we got that. So Solomon did not have animosity, any selfishness in his prayers. Point one, the principles in this prayer of Solomon's are to give us the wisdom of God in a no selfish or wrong motive requests so we can ask for God's people and ask for God's love. Can you say amen? I've got to turn my page and point two. Notice he request, his request for God's people was to be able to help them, for them to get closer to God, to know God's wisdom. That's my prayer for you. And thirdly, church, you and I are to walk from the inside out where God lives and where the wisdom resides in our spirit, man. Let's slow down a little bit. Let's make it what we do count. Let's operate with wisdom and not react. Say amen. Let's lift our eyes a bit. Stop looking at what's wrong with things. Start looking to God where he can give you the answer and what to say. Amen. All right. Our last point, thank God, and that is let the Spirit of God give and move us in his wisdom. Now, just before we go there, go with me to Colossians chapter 4. Look at 5 and 6. I want you to see this is how God wants us to be. Look at a great little scripture here. Colossians chapter 4, 5 and 6. I'm going to take a swig here. It says, walk in wisdom. How should we walk? 
And here's the neat thing. The word walk, your Greek lesson for today means to make a habit. It's peripateo, not peel the potato. And it means to beat a trail or to make a path and, and to cause it to be a habitual path or you walk on it often. Walk in wisdom. Set what wisdom is and walk in it. Amen. And who's going to help you walk in wisdom? There you go. All right. Walk in wisdom to those that are outside, people that are not saved. Redeeming the time. Make good use of your time. Let your speech always be with grace. Everyone say graceful. graceful. And season with salt. What's salt for? Salt preserves. Folks, the, the word season with salt is the word. Have your conversation full of the word. Don't just hit them with the word. Converse. But make sure you lay a little word on them before you leave them. Say amen. Why? Because it's salt. Salt will keep them from rotten. Drump some salt on them. Put some salt on them. Don't insult them. Use wisdom and put it on them so that they can go back and reflect. And that salt, that word of God in their life, they can begin to help them rise above the bondages of this world. Say amen. You are the salt of the earth. If you lose your purpose of spreading salt, you're good for nothing. That's what the scripture says. You should find that in Matthew 5. Are you with me? So let the Spirit of God give you wisdom. Proverbs chapter 2, or excuse me, 24, 3 and 4. Last scripture. Folks, how many know it takes wisdom to build a church? How many here know it takes wisdom to build your family? How many here know it takes God's wisdom to build our life? Hello? Isn't that right? So, here we go. And it says here in uh, Proverbs 24, 3 and 4, through wisdom, a house or a life or a church is built. And by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and plenteous riches. See, wisdom builds the house. Now again, knowledge, input of facts, hearing, wisdom, the output of facts and, uh, and figures to get the desired result. And then after we receive the word, do the word, receive the word, do the word, it brings us to an understanding of how things work. How many here don't even question you walking? You walk just fine. And if somebody said turn around, you wouldn't question that. But if you never did that before, you would have to question everything. You'd have to act on wisdom. Let's not take our spirituality for granted, but let's go to God every day and have him give them, us wisdom. So our house is filled with plenty of things. Our rooms are overjoyed and God is building our life. Can you say amen? You see, if God is building my life, who can tear it down? No one. But when we build our own life, this is the deception, then things can go missing. We'll leave it at that. So, Church, it takes God's wisdom to build up our life, our family, our church, our business. It takes God's wisdom for us to get out of the way so that God can operate. It takes wisdom to sit at the feet of Jesus and to learn from him. That's wise. Two, Psalms 127 verse 1 says, Except the Lord build the house. They that labor, labor in vain. All right, so let's go down to the last scriptures in Ephesians 1, 15 through 20. This is Paul's prayer for the church and for us. It says, therefore I also, after I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Oh, I wish you would pray for me every day. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom. Say amen. He resides on the inside of you. Listen to him. And revelation in the knowledge of him. 
Help God open the eyes of your understanding to see the way he wants you to see it. In the eyes of our understanding, amen? Our understanding, being enlightened, that she may know what is the hope. See, hope gives us a picture of what God wants us to be. If you don't see any hope, then your eyes are not high enough. Lift them up, let God paint some hope through his word to you, so your faith has something to bring substance to. And that is the hope of his calling, what is the exceeding riches of the glory of his inheritance, where in us, the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working, energizing of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. And the Bible says in Ephesians that you and I are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Say amen. amen. Do you see that wisdom? Or do you see that you're sitting right here in this little box called CCM? Where are your eyes? Where are you dwelling? What wisdom is operating your operation? Can you say amen? Because didn't we give our life to the Lord? Amen. So therefore, every day present yourself to God so he can tune us up, tune us in, give us instruction for the day, and lighten our load. Help lift our eyes. Help us to operate not only in God's wisdom, but to understand why we need to do these things and why we need to hold fast and stay consistent with them. Could you say amen? Did you get anything out of that? Give the Lord a praise, will you?